and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we're going to be talking about depression and I guess the muse at that point. I do want to say a couple things right off the bat. Um, I just posted episode 72, which was my super angry rant about writer egos and small press submission fees and things like that. And I did notice a couple things. I was listening to it back when I was putting it up. And I feel like, I feel like, shocker, I might have overreacted on a little bit of stuff. <laughs> Not really, but kind of. Um, and when I mean overreacted, like, every emotion that I had on that is 100% fucking accurate. Like, I feel that way completely. Um, but I, I realized that a lot of the stuff in the um, Jenna Rabicchio article, um, I didn't really touch on as much as that got me into a different train of thought. And so... I was going, well, I probably should talk about this stuff, like, more clearly about, like, the certain, like, things that were made, like, the um, points that were made. And then I was thinking, I'm like, you know what? I have a feeling this episode's going to piss a lot of people off, and I'm probably going to get some feedback. (laughs) So why don't I hold off until I get all the angry emails from everybody? And then I was thinking... I have, I have the greatest audience in the world. Like, you guys get pissed off. Typically, right when I tell you to get pissed off. You guys fucking let me know. So, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Like, we'll probably be able to fucking turn this into a fucking thing. So, that's all good. So, that will be coming. And here's something that's going to um, wet the gusset of all the people listening to this show. For all the broke asses that aren't um, people who help support this show... Um, I'm not going to be doing the shout outs until the butt plugs because for some reason, like the entitled people who listen to this show for free and don't fucking do anything to support it, get really offended when I talk about the people who do the right thing and support the show. So, um, a little present for all of you who, um, bitch about stuff like that. And for all of my awesome supporters, thank you for supporting me. And your big thank you will be at the end of the show. The other thing is, um, someone finally gave me a one-star review. So, I know who you are. So, it's okay. Like, everything's all good. Um, I I expected more from you, but, you know, what are you going to do? But here's the thing. Um, Now it looks like the show's legit. Because... There's a bunch of five stars, and then there's a one star. So there's people who really love the show, and then people who fucking hate the show. So perfect. Everything is going according to plan. So if you are someone who has not yet done that thing with the fun star ratings, go fucking do it. It's the right thing to do. And if you guys all want to just give me one stars, you can do that. But just know, when I die, I'm going to haunt you and do horrible things to you and your family and your house. (sighs) <sighs> I probably won't, actually, now that I think about it. Like, if I'm going to haunt anyone when I die, um, it's not going to be any of you fuckers. Let me, let me try to think of... I, I won't do it now, but like I need to really put some thought into this. Who would I haunt? That's something to think about. Me as an action figure, pick it up at my Etsy shop. It's still out. Um, the other thing I want to say that's a um, correction from last time. I said the April chat book is going to be the split book with me and Bunny Wild. I meant May. The May book is going to be that. Oh, and um, updates on publishing stuff. I am going to be reviewing the um, PDF proof of Winner Your Mom's Sodomy Prize for Poetry today. Then I will order the print proof. And if the print proof is perfect, then um, that order will be made. And within about a week to a week and a half I should get the product and then I'll send those out to everybody let us bleed the book with me and bunny wild um I did the um proof to her to look it over and make sure it's okay I think it actually looks really really good so I'm going to be doing my paper order today um to put that together blood rag issue 11 um will be out next week the first issue of the bloodshed review 
um, is going to be out shortly. And um, the people in that issue is going to be um, Jeff Taylor, Mindy Simonson, and the uh, featured poet, the the chapbook that's inside of it, is going to be from Shailen Marks. So um, it should be a wonderful debut issue. I'm very fucking excited about it. So with all that said, let's get on with the shizzle no. What I want to talk about today is... I was watching some, no, I was not watching. I was listening to an interview with someone and then that got me looking at all their shit and I started going through a bunch of their stuff. The person who I am talking about is someone, a poet called uh, C.A. Conrad. I'm on the fence actually on what I think of their work. Some of the poems I've read I actually kind of dig, even though I feel like some of them, it feels like three separate poems that were like put into one poem kind of thing. But again, that's just like a personal preference thing. But like, I feel like those of you who are into um, concrete poetry would really dig how they use the the negative space on the page and where their lines form and stuff like that. It's very interesting. And for someone who I think this is the thing I'm having with CA Conrad is that most of the people who write like that, I typically don't like the poems they write. And so coming across someone who uses that technique when they lay the words down on the page and then have the words actually carry some weight, it's like a strange feeling for me. So uh, I might read um, one of their poems here in a little bit that kind of stuck out to me. But yeah, I'm kind of on the fence with this here. But the thing that was said that made me really start thinking about all this stuff, and honestly, there's something to be said, like... You can be a total crap poet that writes awful shit that I would never read. But I swear to God, if you say something that is like, like it just like kind of blows my mind for a little bit, I will give you all the credit in the fucking world and like respect you as a creator, basically. And so again, I'm like, do I like C.A. Conrad? One of the things that C.A. Conrad said was they were talking about um, depression and how there are people out there who think they cannot write unless they are depressed and that the depression is the thing that creates the art and that the depression is the muse. And I totally have dealt with this with people before. And I have a story I will tell you. In a, actually, I'll tell you now. Um, when I first started getting into songwriting, when I was a youngin' and in punk bands and all that shit, I was really big on this idea. Because like for a long time... Especially if you grew up listening to like grunge and alternative and post punk and all this other crap that they tried to call just fucking punk and rock and shit like that. Those early 90s bands, a lot of their songs were just like word vomit. Like it didn't mean anything. It was just like, here are words in a line and I'm singing them now. So when I started listening to Social Distortion, and um, I've talked about Social Distortion before on my channel they were one of those bands that kind of blew me away. Like just like kind of showed me something new, um, which is funny because like they're very, um, (laughs) not unique, I guess like their influences are very obvious. But anyway, I remember reading this article by Mike Ness, not an article, an interview. And Mike Ness is the singer, songwriter, guitar player, social distortion guy. And he said that he couldn't write unless he was depressed. And I think that came up because there was a long gap between albums. Like, there was uh, 
I want to say like a four or five year gap between the first and second album and then like a three year gap between the second and third. And that was about the time I read the art, the interview. And so I was like, Oh, okay. So you can only write good stuff when you're depressed. Okay. Well, I guess that means I need to be depressed all the time if I'm going to be writing anything good. And of course, that's not what happened. But then I started just realizing, I'm like, oh man, when I am depressed, I do write things that I feel are better songs. Oh, like this is just one of those things in the back of your head. And I think that thought, that lie, is what a lot of writers and poets kind of hang their hat on and why a lot of poets feel like they need to be depressed all the time things need to be going bad in order to feed their art so i was looking at it for me and when i'm really down i don't know how else to explain it so i'm just going to explain it the way i see it when i write if i'm really down and just like depressed and like lowest of lows when i sit down to write i want you to try to imagine this okay when i sit down to write it's kind of like I can take like a razor blade and just run it down my chest, like right down the middle, okay? And then I just kind of like crack open my rib cage and open it up like a curio cabinet or whatever, okay? And my heart and my fucking guts and my soul just like fall out onto the table on top of my keyboard while I'm typing. And I'm just, like, smashing all the blood and guts and shit under the keys and into the fucking motherboard of my fucking computer. Okay? That's how I feel when I'm depressed. And when I'm doing that, I am so fucking open and I am so fucking vulnerable. And I am fucking real as fuck. And when I read those poems back, whether it is because... I remember what I was feeling when I was writing that or what I feel more of a kinship to those poems because there's a lot of my blood and my soul in those words and I can see that okay whereas if everything's okay and I'm just writing a poem like I'm not going to feel that attachment to that Do you see what I'm saying? And so what C.A. Conrad said about this is that, like, the depression isn't the focus. It's the thing that makes us focus. So once we understand that, and we know the focus is really the thing, you can use that focus when you're happy or you're sad. Okay? Okay. It, it, it doesn't matter anymore once you realize that the focus is the thing and not the depression. Okay. The depression is just like the magnifying glass or the microscope to where you could like look deep. But then once you understand that, you're like, oh, I just have to look deep. So when you are writing for you poets out there who are listening to this, if that analogy of me opening my chest up made sense to you and you feel that think about when that happens for you does it happen for you only when you are super fucking depressed okay because like there are times when as i started that analogy i said i sit here and i take a razor blade and i slide it down my fucking chest down my fucking sternum you know but when i'm depressed That razor blade does that by itself. I'm not even holding it. I just sit down and like my body knows, oh, we need to open up now and spill. Okay. But when I'm not depressed, I have to pick that razor blade up and do that cut. Do you see what I'm saying? It's all about understanding the focus and being like aware of yourself enough to know when to open up to where you can do that thing. 
I hope this is making sense. It makes sense to me. Um, but I don't know. Some of you guys are going, okay, so I need to get a fucking razor blade? No. This is, again, I'm creating an analogy for you here. All right. Oh, man. So that was, that, that's kind of like the, the big fucker to talk about right now. So questions that you need to ask yourself is if you feel like you write better when you're depressed, think about why that is. Think about the eyes that you use when you observe yourself when you are in that situation. Because I have been in those moments where I am completely cut off from myself and I'm writing. And those poems don't feel as good. They just don't. They might be good and other people might be like, oh, this is great, you know. But to me, it, it doesn't have the same resonance as something does when I'm fucking bleeding. Okay? And the only one who is going to know this is you. You are going to know how deep those cuts are when you read those lines back. Because you are the one who knows what you're going through. Whereas someone just picking up your book and reading it, they're not going to know like which poem like you were like in tears writing. I mean, they might be able to see, oh, this one's a very personal poem about a breakup, and this poem is about a butterfly. You know? And it doesn't really seem like a metaphor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, if you are a good writer, both poems should come off quite well. But the attachment that you are going to have will definitely be attached more to the poem that you bled all over. If that makes sense. Okay. This is me from the future. I have been editing this episode. Something dawned on me, and it's something that I talked about really quick at the beginning and like closer to the beginning of this episode. And for those of you who feel like the depression is the thing that gets you to write, if that's the your muse is your depression, that's not what makes your writing good. And we were talking about focus here. I think what it is is the vulnerability. When you are depressed and you are writing from a depressed state, you are much more vulnerable. You are open like we were talking about. Okay? And that vulnerability is the thing that makes us feel when we read our own work that this is much more real. The reason we feel that way is because that mask that we put on to hide, like how we're really feeling about shit, that's gone. We are open, raw, real. Okay? And I really, really think that readers can sense that. They can see that. People know when someone's given them a line of shit. You know what I'm saying? So instead of trying to, like, go, well, I'm only going to write if I'm depressed... Be conscious, be aware when you sit down to write that you are going to be vulnerable, that you are going to open yourself up, whether you're depressed or not. It's the vulnerability. It's not the depression. Okay? So that's the only thing I wanted to add to that. And with that said, the other thing about this is when we write these poems... Um, and I, I've said this before too, like when we write the poem, the poem is dead. Like once we write it, it's not ours anymore. It belongs to the reader at that point. Okay. They are going to use their perspective and their mind and their soul to read that poem and decide what that poem means to them. And then the importance that they put on that poem as it being like a poem that's either their favorite poem or a poem they hate. It's up to them at that point. Okay. So, and this goes back to that whole thing when I would talk about like, um, 
some poems I write I think are great and then other people are like, eh, it's okay. But I like this one over here. And I'm like, you like that one? What the fuck? You know, it's that whole thing. Because, again, like, it's theirs now. And beauty's in the eye of the beholder. That whole fucking thing. You know? As poets, as writers, we need to not assume that certain poems are going to mean more to others. And we are not to be, like, butthurt when that poem that we think is the most amazing poem isn't everybody's favorite okay like it's just how it is and i've talked about this on episodes in the past so i'm not going to harp on it but that is something to think about there so now i'm going to read this poem from ca conrad it's called glitter in my wounds um, and i'll have a link to it in the description down below and take a look at their poems because the way they're laid out might not be for everybody, but some of you might see this and go, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, and so play with that a little bit if you want. Okay, glitter in my wounds. First and most important, dream our missing friends forward. Burn the reflection into empty chairs. We are less bound by time than the clockmaker fears. This morning, all I want is to follow where the stone angels point. Bird song lashing me to tears. Heterosexuals need to see our suffering, the violent deaths of our friends and lovers. To know glitter on a queer is not to dazzle, but to unsettle the foundation of this murderous culture. Defiant weeds smashing up through cement. You think Oscar Wilde was funny? Well, darling, I think he was busy distracting straight people so they would not kill him. If you knew how many times I have been told, you're not like my gay best friend who tells me jokes and makes me laugh. No, I sure as fuck am not. I have no room in my life to audition for your pansy mascot. You people can't kill me. And think you can kill me again. I met a tree in Amsterdam and stood barefoot beside it for 20 minutes, then left completely restored. Yet another poem not written by a poet. Sometimes we need one muscle to relax so the others follow. My friend Mandy calls after a long shift at the strip club to say, while I'm standing in line for death, I am fanning my hot pussy with your new book. Will you sign it next week, my fearless faggot sister? Dude, that's so fucking heavy. That's so fucking heavy. And the title, Glitter in My Wounds. Like, that works. That's how you fucking title a poem. I think that's why I'm kind of like drawn to this a little bit it's just it's well done like do I think there's lines in here that are unnecessary that don't like move the poem along yes but this is a good fucking poem it really fucking is I don't know I'm as shocked as you and it was in fucking poetry can you believe it fuck me dude ugh even a blind squirrel finds a nut. Fuck in hell. Oh my gosh. Again, that's C.A. Conrad. So, um, go give them a look. And just see if you're into it or not. Yeah, I guess that's it. Let's move into the fucking butt plugs. Alright, so butt plug time. Um, Bukowski Book Club, it's going on now. And if you join my YouTube page at any tier, you can take part in that. In fact, when I'm done with this, I'm going to be doing a um, live stream with the members where I'm reading the poems that are um, everyone's favorite poem from the book so far. So um, that's going to be going on here in a bit. You know what? Since we're talking about those badass mamma jammas over there in the crew. Let's give them some fucking shout outs right now. 
So, I want to give a big thank you to these motherfuckers over on Patreon. Michael, Cedar, Harry, thank you guys so much. And then over in the YouTube thank you crew, I want to give a big thank you to you. Patrick, to Britt, to JH, to Jan, to Deb, to Ethan, and to Julia. You guys are fucking awesome. And then over in the Anarchy crew, a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim J. To Shaylin, to Tim G, to Chill Baby, to Tamara, and to Adam. You guys are awesome. And Adam, thank you for that email, by the way. I will be hitting you back up later. And then uh, the biggest of the biggest thank yous go over to the Chappies over there in the Chat Book of the Month Club. I want to give a big thank you to Caitlin and to Chase. You guys are the shit. And um, last but not least, I just want to say, Jessica... Thank you so much for all your support that you've given me. Um, you're amazing. And I hope that whatever that you're going through, I know this year has been a tough year for you. Whatever it is, um, we're all thinking about you. And just, you're the shit. And you got this. And I know I will be seeing you around. Um, so take care of yourself and don't be a stranger okay so with all that said keep buying my books type hard everybody and i will talk to you all later i just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible anarchy crew and my followers on patreon i appreciate the hell out of you guys and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible you guys are awesome and if you'd like to join the crew or the anarchy crew just hit the join button beneath this video and if you'd like to become a member of my patreon you can run over to the link down below to do that as well thank you